audio files in each one of these projects, I had a process that I went through repeatedly in GarageBand. I like to edit this on my iPad because it allowed me to do it really wherever I was when I had a chance. So if you watched my other tutorial, I showed how to pull those into your iPad using iTunes. And now I'll show you where those are in GarageBand and how you can edit the files if necessary if they need some straightening up on the beat. So I'm going into GarageBand and I'm going to start a new project. And I always started with Smart Drums because this gives me a solid beat that I can work off of. And I'm just going to make a very simple beat with a bass drum and a snare. And to make this faster to record, I got in the habit of just changing the number of bars in the upper right. I would change this to two bars. Notice that's that plus sign in the upper right. Change the bars at first to just two, and then I would record those. Then going back into that plus sign, I'm going to change this to um, probably 40 bars just so that I know it's long enough for the song. Some of the students would record a long time and multiple takes, and just to make sure it's long enough, I usually do 40. And what that does is that loops that recording that I just did. So the two bars are now are going to be 40 bars. I just tap this icon in the sort of in the middle at the top to go to the track view and you notice there's my drum track 40 bars this adds another icon if you notice right here in the upper right and this is where the loops are stored so right here I have some Apple loops but in the middle it says audio files these are the ones that I have moved over using my PC like I showed in the other tutorial I'm going to take uh, just for an example, this one that says Long Division Cohan 95. That was the teacher's name that I worked with, and the 95 is telling me the tempo was 95 beats per minute. I'm going to drag that in, and I labeled it with the tempo so I would remember now what that was so that I could set the tempo to 95 so that that lines up with the beat that the students heard when they were recording this. If you pinch, you can zoom in and out on the timeline. And I'm zooming in so that I can see this wave where they started. And you can see right there is where they started their rap. And I probably want that to be on the downbeat. I want that to be at the start of a measure. So I'm going to shorten up this track and drag this over. I usually would put this at measure 2. And I'm going to line that up so that they start right on the beat. Now notice how this sounds when I play this. this, is our vision of long vision. Okay, now this group actually did a pretty good job of staying on the beat. Sometimes it would really be off, and after they set a line or two, I would have to adjust and slide that over so that it was back on the beat. So let's imagine that after they say their first line right here. This is our vision of now they give me a pause right here. And if I had to split that and move it, the way I do it is I tap it right there at the marker, and it'll show split. So I pick split, I drag the scissors down, and now I've got their track split into two parts. That allows me to move this left and right as necessary. So I'd usually zoom in, and maybe if I had to drag this to the left, I'd shorten that track up, and then I would select this one and slide it over until it lined up. And if you do a group that speeds up or slows down too much, you'll see right away what I mean when you look at the track. It just doesn't line up with the measures. So, you gotta do so if I had to split that, I would tap that, split it, and drag this as necessary left or right. And I would do that repeatedly throughout the whole track. Sometimes the students would have multiple takes on here. So I actually would have to go to the end of the first take and maybe cut out part of that. So, for example, if this line right here to the left of my marker was not good, I could split this and I could go back here and split it. 
and then if I tap that and delete it, that part's gone. I might have to go to the end and find a good take of that, cut it out, and paste it in here. Because you can copy, cut, and paste. If you notice, I have cut, copy, delete. And then when you've copied something, let's say I copy this, when you tap the timeline, it gives you the option to paste it. So I would line that up, line up all the timing, I'd get rid of any of the bad takes to the right, make sure that was all deleted out. And then you notice, let's say this was done, the track ends at eight or seven bars. So I would go in to that plus sign again and change this down to eight bars. Before exporting this, drag out the, the panel so that you can see the mix and mute the drums. Because when you export this, you don't want to export the drums, you want just their track. I usually would turn it up all the way because I want it as loud as possible. And then you can go to My Songs. And at this point, I would have to bring it into UJAM. And that involves sending it to either my PC or my Mac. And I always did that with email. So I'm going to hold on that until these icons come up in the upper left. The first one is the export icon or the sharing icon. And I'm going to email that to myself. It gives me some options. It exports the song and then I would send that to myself. I'll show on the computer how I then use UJAM to add in the extra music. Mm -hmm.